Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing today? <clears throat> Another beautiful day here in God's green earth that God has given us. Let's give thanks and praise to God for that. It's good to see you here for another video, um, another preaching message here today that uh, God has showed me. So um, we're going to start off with the Soul, Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn book, um, number 147, entitled Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Today we're going to do what we don't normally do. We're going to sing all three verses. All three verses, Sean. Yes, because, because we can. So <laughs> let's sing it out. <clears throat> Leaning on the everlasting arms. Here we go. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all along. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Man, it feels so good to be leaning on Jesus instead of leaning on uh, the things of this world. If you guys have a King James Bible, um, our opening reading today is going to be in the Old Testament. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, the fifth book of the Bible, um, Deuteronomy, chapter number 33, if you want to follow along. And we're going to be reading verses 26 through 29. That's Deuteronomy 33, verse 26, uh, through the end of the chapter um, in verse... 29. Here we go. <clears throat> Bible says, There is none like unto, unto the God of Jeshurun, Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellence on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. The word of the Lord. Amen. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Alvis. Good to see you again today. Um, today's message is going to be short and sweet. Uh, so we're going to be talking about leaning on the everlasting arms, putting refuge in Jesus. In the times we're living in today, you know, if you would have asked me last year, uh, about the same time um, last year, that, you know, the whole world would be in lockdown, 
Um, there'd be people wearing face masks everywhere they go, everywhere they go, and um, toilet paper would be flying off the shelves. Uh, I, you know, I probably would have not believed you. I probably would have uh, stocked up on more supplies, more toilet paper. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. It's hard to believe that uh, we're living in the days we are today, and you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, people are worried about, you know, people are losing their jobs or wondering, you know, how am I going to pay my bills? They're worried about their health, you know, and the elderly people are sick. They're wondering, am I going to catch this disease and, and is it going to kill me? Um, you know, families, how am I going to feed my family? And, you know, a lot, a lot of craziness, this, this pandemic has, uh, got people seeking refuge and, you know, so what does it mean to seek refuge from something? The word refuge means being safe from danger, being safe from danger or trouble. You're seeking refuge. You're seeking safety. People want to be safe from this virus that's going around. They want to be protected. They don't want any harm uh, to happen to them. They don't want anything bad happening to them. The Bible says that God is our refuge. Specifically, in the opening verse we read, it says, uh, God is our refuge. The eternal God is our what we should be leaning on, our everlasting arms. Now, in order to seek refuge, uh, first, you need to be afraid of something, right? You need to have something that you're seeking refuge from. Um, because without any danger or any trouble, you're not going to seek refuge. This is why, you know, many people, you know, they only call to the Lord in times of great desperation, you know, when their back's against the wall, they have no other options, no other choice, then they seek the Lord. If you would, open up your Bible to the book of Luke. It's in the New Testament, the fourth, uh, the third gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and go to uh, chapter 13. And we're going to be starting there in verse in verse 22. And I want to look at what Jesus uh, says here. Luke 13, uh, verse 22. And when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that... Did I write this wrong? <laughs> Excuse me, hold on. 13, 22. Oh, this is... Uh, I apologize, I'm in the wrong book. Sorry, Luke, Luke chapter 20, chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, verse 22. There we go. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and he went out through the cities and villages. Try this again. Luke chapter 13, verse 22. And he went and he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord. Are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, this is the words of Jesus, verse 24, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and hath shut the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there at the last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. So uh, somebody asked Jesus straight up, they said, you know, how many people are going to heaven, Jesus? Are there, are there going to be a lot of people who are going to be saved or are there going to be few? And it kind of reminds me of the question we asked today, you know, through this pandemic. You know, are there, are there going to be a lot of people who die from, from this virus or are there going to be few? We need refuge. We need safety, right? That's the question they asked Jesus. Jesus, 
Are there going to be a lot of people who are going to get the safety and refuge or going to be few? Now, there are some people who are afraid of God's judgment. Uh, judgment day, you know, life after death type of thing. Because none of us really know what's happening after death. We, I can't prove to you exactly what happens after death. We all believe it based on the Bible, based on faith, what happens. But the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, you don't have to turn there. But it says, and as it is appointed men once to die, but after this, the judgment. The Bible teaches something a little bit different about Judgment Day than most people think what Judgment Day is. Now, I'm not going to get into Judgment Day today. Um, That's not what my sermon's about. But people think, you know, that, that after you die, you stand before the Lord and he judges whether you're good or bad. And and de- and deter- and determines uh, if you were if you were mostly good, then you go to heaven. If you're mostly bad or you did really bad things, you go to hell. But that's not actually what the Bible uh, says. Judgment Day is. But like I said, I'm not going to talk about Judgment Day today. That's a sermon for another day. Um, but if you read the next verse in Hebrews chapter nine, verse twenty-eight, it says, "So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many." And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So for those of us who look to Jesus, we have our sins forgiven right now. So when we die, we're going to see Jesus. We're going to be saved. We're going to have salvation. And we're not going to face any judgment. There's not going to be any uh, any punishment for our sins. Because our sins are forgiven through the blood of Christ. Bible, uh, Jesus, uh, the Bible says that to them that look to him. Or in other words, to them that seek refuge in Jesus. Jesus is our refuge. Jesus is our safety net. There's a lot of people nowadays who seek safety, who seek refuge in things of the world. After you die, let me ask you a question. After you die, do you think that your good works... Or the fact that you were a good person, or um, that you were an outstanding citizen of society, do you think that's going to save you? Is that what you're taking your refuge in? Is that what you're relying on? Because I'll tell you something. If you, if you do that, Jesus says in verse 27 here of Luke that we read, he said, The Master will say to you, Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Because the Bible says that no matter how good we do, we all come short of the glory of God. I say, well, I give to charity. <laughs> I don't steal anything, Sean. That sounds unfair that God would cast me out. I live an honest life. Why should I? Why should the door be shut unto me? But Jesus says here in verse 24, look what he says. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not enter be able. Why, Jesus? Why can't you let me in? I lived a good life. Because the refuge is in the Lord. I mean, it, it, we don't serve a mean God. God's not mean. Jesus explains this very, very perfectly in verse 25. He says, When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut the door, And ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know not whence ye are. Jesus is comparing heaven to like somebody you would go uh, to seek refuge to, right? And he says, once the master shut the door, you can't, the door cannot be opened again to you. In other words, right now, while you're living, while you're breathing, while you're hearing this message that I'm talking about right now, you have a chance to seek refuge. You have a chance. The door is open to you, right? But once you die, once you take your last breath, the door is shut, okay? You, you don't get any more chances. But right now, those of us who call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says we shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But after we die, you know, the door's shut. It's closed. Jesus gives us a perfect illustration right here in the book of... Uh, Luke, so I don't mistake, make that mistake again, but um, that those who, who seek to enter in the straight way, you know, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You know, those of us who believe in Jesus, we know 
that Jesus is the way, right? That Jesus is the straight gate. Anybody who tries to go any other way and try to get to heaven any other way than through faith in Jesus, you're going the wrong way and you won't be saved. And unfortunately, um, Jesus says many, many will strive to enter in the wrong way. <laughs> and, and, and it's going to be a sad day for them. <clears throat> but Jesus is the straight gate. He's the way. You say, well, that doesn't sound fair, Sean. Yeah, but that's the straight gate. You know, that's Jesus is the straight gate that he's talking about through through faith in Jesus. So right now, as you're breathing, as you're hearing this message, you have a chance to seek refuge, seek safety, seek salvation from hell, from your sins through Jesus. But friends, if you don't put your faith in Jesus, if you're trusting in your works to save you, if you're trusting in, oh, well, I, I read my Bible, I preached the Bible, that's not going to save you, right? Like me, yeah, I preached the Bible, but this is not why I think I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to heaven because I preached the Bible on the internet. I'm going to heaven because I put my faith in Jesus that he died for my sins on the cross. Can I get an amen? <laughs> We have to seek refuge in God. That's what I'm trying to say. We have to seek refuge in the Holy Bible. Of course, Jesus, uh, of course, is the word, uh, God's word in the flesh. We have to seek refuge through Jesus. Now, me personally, <clears throat> I love taking refuge in the Lord. I love leaning on the everlasting arms. You know, when I read the Bible and I pray and I and I. And I uh, am reminded about how Jesus died for me and how he loves us. Man, that gives me safe. That gives me comfort in, in knowing that I have refuge and I have a safe place in the Lord. A place where I'm protected, where my soul is in God's hands and not in, and not in my own hands. Where, oh man, am I good enough? Am I going to make it? Like, man, how... That, it would be so nerve-wracking to, to be constantly wondering if... Um, if I if I'm gonna have refuge when I, after I die, but the great thing is Jesus said you can have refuge right now through me through faith and what I did for you on the cross. You know I feel protected that God's got angels watching after me. And you say, well, what's the point of your message, Sean? Look, my point is this. You know, it, it's one thing to take refuge in the Lord for salvation, but we also need to take refuge in the Lord right now. In our present lives, we need to live our lives off the Bible. We need to live our lives in accordance to His will, right? Too often, I think that uh, we place emphasis on on other people. Maybe it's maybe it's a past old preacher um, who's who's died and gone away, or um, maybe maybe you look back at the apostles and you say, well. You know, they were great back then, you know, they were saved, they knew Jesus, but today, you know, we, we can't live like that anymore, you know, we have, it's too hard to follow the Bible today. Um, but, you know, right now, today, we have a chance to live just like the apostles did, just like your old preachers did in the past. We can live our lives holy and set apart for God. And we can do extraordinary things right now. We could take refuge right now in the Lord and follow His good book, His teachings. If you uh, flip over to the next chapter, we're going to go to John this time. Sorry about that. This time we're going to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And I want to take a look at what Jesus says right here. About how we could presently take refuge in the Lord right now and it can benefit our lives. Let's look at John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. He's saying, hey, don't worry about things, right? Don't worry about all this stuff that's going on, right? In the world. Don't let your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. He's saying, look, you believe in God, you believe in the Bible, you follow the Bible, you don't have nothing to worry about. Don't worry about your troubles. You have refuge right now. Jesus says, look, you don't have nothing to worry about. If you believe in me, you're safe. You have refuge. All right, let's look at verse uh, 12. Let's skip down or flip the page if you have to. Uh, verse 12, uh, John chapter 14 
says, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So Jesus says, I'm going to ascend to heaven. I'm going to go back to my Father. But you're going to stay here. But don't worry about it. Don't have any trouble, because you're going to do the same things that I do, and you're going to do them even greater, more extraordinarily things than even I did. And this, is, this doesn't mean that you're going to bring people back from the dead uh, necessarily because we're sinners. You know, we, we, we really limit God. You know, we, we could have that power to call upon the Lord and do that. But, you know, the Bible says that uh, faith can move mountains. I'm paraphrasing. The, the verse kind of uh, skipped my brain right now. But look, nobody can preach as good as Jesus, right? Does that mean that we shouldn't preach? Right? Nobody can do great miracles like Jesus. Does that mean we still can't do good works? No, of course not. You know, Jesus told us that he that believeth on me shall uh, the works. <laughs> it's kind of tongue twister. He says, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and even greater works. You know, I think I think uh, what I'm trying to get at is this is. Don't cut yourself short, okay? Don't think that, well, in, in modern times, you know, with everything going on, I can't do good works. No, you can. Jesus said you can do greater works than even me. He wasn't just talking to the apostles right there. Yeah, he was speaking to the apostles, but he was talking to everybody. How do you know that? Because if you have a King James Bible, it says right here, uh, the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father in heaven. If you have refuge on the Lord, you believe on the Lord, nothing, no good work is out of reach for you. I think uh, in, in Philippians, in the New Testament, um, the Bible says that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Nothing's out of your reach. You can do all things. Jesus said you could do everything that I did and more, greater things than me. You want to be a good soul winner? You can be the greatest soul winner. You can go win somebody to Christ tomorrow. You know, you say, well, you know, I just want to read my Bible more. If I could just read my Bible more, but I, I don't think so. I don't think I can accomplish. Yes, you can. You can do that. You can take refuge in the Lord and through the power of God, through faith, you can be a better Bible reader. You can do that too. Look, the point is, there is no uh, work, no good work, um, that's out of reach. That's too great for you to accomplish. Through faith in Jesus, we can do all things. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Let's flip over there. I think it's in Philippians chapter 4, if I'm not mistaken. Where is it? Chapter 4, verse uh, chapter 3. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Philippians chapter 4, verses 13. Read that with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Thank you for helping me find that verse, Lord. Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I want you to read that aloud with me. Read that aloud with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Say it again. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Say it again. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You say, I feel stupid talking to a computer screen, Sean. I don't want to say that. Listen, if you don't want to say it to a computer screen to yourself, then how are you ever going to actually do it? <laughs> say it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Who can do it? I can do it. You can do it. It doesn't matter who you are. You can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's what the Bible says. That's the word of God. Because here's the thing, you know, 
Our refuge should be in the Lord, friends. You know, we shouldn't have this mentality of, oh, well, I can't do it. You know, the virus is out there. I can't go soul winning. Yes, you can. You can do all things. You can still reach people. Maybe you might have to get creative, do something different, do something a different way, but you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. And because because our refuge is in the Lord, and there is nothing too great for the Lord to do. Am I right? Think about it. We have nothing to fear. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? You know, when, when you're doing God's will, when you're taking refuge in the Lord, there's nothing that can stop you. Anyways, that's my message for the day, friends. It's a short message. It's simple. When the world tries to tell you, hey, you need to take refuge by going out and buying more to- more toilet paper. <laughs> you just you just turn around and say, world, listen, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I don't need more toilet paper. I need more Bible paper. Right? And the world tells you, no, 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 no. There's a pandemic going on. There's a virus. You need to wear your mask. You need to take refuge and wear your mask. And you just tell the world, listen, I can do all things through Christ who which strengtheneth me. I don't need your mask. I need the full armor of God. That's what I need. I need the full armor of God. That's my refuge. The Lord is my refuge. And when the world tells you, hey, you need to socially distance. That's what you need to do and take refuge. That's what's going to keep you safe. You look back and you tell the world, listen, I need spiritual distancing. I need to get closer with my God and my Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what I need. That's what my refuge is going to be. So, friends, today I just wanted to uh, challenge you to take more refuge in the Lord. Um, More Bible reading. More prayer. More spreading the gospel. That's what we need in our lives. That's what our refuge is should be. Now, I'm not saying not to wear a mask. I'm not saying not to social distance. Um, Those are good things too, but just remember your spiritual life, your spiritual um, safety net is in the Lord. And don't forget that uh, our eternal God is our refuge. He's the one who's going to deliver us from all evil and protect us. So uh, let's get out there. Let's serve him. Um, Without fear, you know, we have nothing to be afraid of. If God be for us, who can be against us, right? Anyway, that's my basic message for today, guys. I hope that uh, message reached you well, and and God bless you. Thank you for listening. Um, Until next time, I'll see you guys. And as always, I'll give God the last word. Um, If you want to read along with me, I think we're going to be in uh, Psalms chapter 91. Psalms chapter 91. Um, But before then, I'm just going to say a prayer and and God bless you. Have a good day. Bye. (sighs) Dear God, uh, I thank you so much for this message today. I thank you for refuge. I thank you for taking us in. Lord, you didn't have to take us in. You you live above us. You live in heaven and we're just sinners. But you, you decided to love us enough to send your son to die for us and Give us an opportunity to take refuge in you and in your son. We're really thankful for that, you know, the the refuge that you give us. Lord, I ask that you help us guide more people to you so that more people can take refuge in you. Give us the strength that we need. Give us uh, the intelligence that we need. Lord, send us the Holy Spirit. Send us your spirit. Send each and every person who hears this message today. Lord, send them the Holy Spirit. Give them protection. Give them guidance. Give them everything that they need, all the tools that they need. And Lord, keep them safe. Keep them protected. Give them refuge. Lord, I ask that you give them boldness to not get distracted with the things of this world, but to stay focused on doing your will and your what you would have, uh, what you would have us do and keep us away from sin and temptation. Lord, I ask that you just keep helping us lift the bar higher and higher and, and remember that we can do greater things for you if we just have faith, if we just have the determination. Lord, I can't wait to see you in your kingdom. I know it's 
going to be amazing. It's going to be more than just refuge. It's going to be, I can't, more beautiful than I could even imagine, Lord. But just give us the minds that we need to be as wise as serpents and give us the patience and the heart to be as calm and peaceful as doves until we get there. Lord, we can't thank you enough for for refuge that you've given us. Lord, until we meet you in heaven, be with us. Be with us. You're our refuge, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you guys. Um, As always, I'm going to give God the last word. So we're going to... close with psalm uh psalm 91 psalm 91 i'm just gonna read the whole song god bless have a good day psalm 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust and his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh to thee Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou... Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, and young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, I will set him on high. Because he hath known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Amen. All right.